Hello everyone. This is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on Java array list. As you all are aware in Java arrays are an important data structure to store data, but array is static in size and is suitable for fixed length data structure. So what if you wish to have a variable length data structure so that you can store the elements in an array dynamically? In this video, I will introduce you the important class of collections framework called ArrayList, which allows you to store the elements dynamically as it is resizable. Let's look at the topics to be covered in this session. First and foremost, I will talk about hierarchy of ArrayList class and collections framework. Next, I will tell you what is ArrayList and its internal working. Once you understand the basics, then I will take you to the programming part wherein I will be explaining various constructors and methods supported by ArrayList along with examples. And finally, I will wrap up the session by explaining benefits of ArrayList over arrays. Without any further ado, let's get started. A Java collection framework provides an architecture to store and manipulate a group of objects, and it includes interfaces, classes, and algorithm. In this figure, blue boxes refers to the different interfaces, and the gray color rectangles defines the class. So here, list is an interface, and ArrayList, linked list, vector, all these classes implements list as an interface. Similarly, as DQ is also an interface, so it extends and inherits Q interface. Now, talking about ArrayList, it uses a dynamic array for storing the elements. It inherits abstract list class and implements list interface. Then, list interface extends collection and iterable interfaces in hierarchical order. So, this is about the hierarchy of ArrayList class. Now, let's see what is ArrayList. ArrayList is a part of collection framework and is the implementation of list interface where the elements can be dynamically added or removed from the list. Also, the size of the list is increased dynamically if the elements are added more than the initial size. Though it may be slower than the standard arrays but can be very helpful in programs where lots of manipulation in the array is required. Some key points to note here. Array list is initialized by a size. However, the size can increase if the collection grows or shrunk if the objects are removed from the collection. Next, array list allows us to randomly access the list. And array list cannot be used for primitive types like int, char, etc. To access all those, we need a wrapper class for such cases. Now let's move further and see the internal working of array list. First, we create an empty array and then go on adding the elements. Once the size of the array is full, that is, if the size of the current elements is greater than the maximum size of the array, then we have to increase the size of the array. But the size of the array cannot be increased dynamically. So what happens internally is a new array is created and the old array is copied to the new array. So by this, automatically the size will be doubled and it will be increased. So you can go on adding the elements how much you require. So that's how it works internally. Now let's see the various constructors supported by Java ArrayList. First, ArrayList. This constructor builds an empty ArrayList. Coming to syntax, my array is a reference to an ArrayList that holds the references to object of type E. Array has an initial capacity of 10 cells, although the capacity will be increased as needed as references are added to the list. And cells will contain references to objects of type E. Next, ArrayList of collection C. This constructor is used to add all the elements of specified collection C to the current array list. That is, you can add all the specified collection C to the current array list. Next, array list of incapacity. Here, this is used to build an array list that has a specified initial capacity. An initial capacity is the number of cells that the array list starts with. It can expand beyond this capacity if you add more elements. Now let's see a small example to understand how and where these constructors are used in ArrayList. I will open my Eclipse and first create package called Edureka. Now I will create a class called constructor. The very first thing that I do before writing the code is I will import util.star package. Now, let's begin with the code. I will first create an array list of type string. I initialize the counter value to zero and using advanced for loop, I'm trying to increase the count of counter. But we don't have any elements present in the array list. 
So if I try to print the counter value, it will not retain any value. Why? Because we don't have any elements present in the list. Okay. Now I will create one more array list and initialize the capacity to that. I'll change the name and give it as B and I will initialize the capacity to 30. Okay. Now again, if we try to print the counter value, it will not print because we have just initialized the capacity. Again, if we try to obtain the value of counter, it won't get incremented. Why? Because we don't have anything in the list. Now let's create a string array and add some elements into it. After creating a string array, I will create an object of array list and then append an element using add method. So let's see how to do that. So this is how I will add an element using add method. Now I will use advanced for loop to print the elements present in the array list. Now let's run the program and see what will be the output. So here is the output. As I have already told, it won't return the counter value because the array list is empty and the counter value will be automatically zero. Next, on creating a string and adding the elements, it has retrieved all the elements present in the string, even with the one that we have added, that is J2W. So this is how constructors are used in ArrayList. Now, Let's dive into the various methods supported by ArrayList. First, add method. This method is used to add the elements to the ArrayList. That is, it is used to insert a specific element at a specific position index in a list. For example, you can create an ArrayList and go on adding the elements using the add method. We will demonstrate and see all the methods of ArrayList in Eclipse after knowing the concepts of them. Next, clear method. This method is used to remove all the elements from the list. That is, you can just use clear method to remove all the elements present in the list. Next, trim to size. This method trims the capacity of an array list instance to the list's current size. That is, if you are creating an array list of size 9 and if you are adding only 3 elements to that, on calling this method trim to size, it trims the size of array list from 9 to 3. That is, it reduces the array list size to the number of element that it contains in the array list. Next, index of. This method returns the index of first occurrence of the specified element in the list. If that element is not present in the list, then it returns minus 1. Suppose in this case, if you want to return the index of 5, and if you write here 5, then it will return a of 2 because a of 1 and a of 2. But if you try to find the index of 3 which is not present in the array list, then it will return minus 1. That is, it returns minus 1 if the list does not contain the particular element. Next, object clone. This method is used to return a copy of the array list. That is, on calling this method, it clones the entire array list. So, for example, if you are adding two elements in the array and you are cloning the entire thing, then again after clone list, it will return the whole element present in the array list. Next, object to array. This method is used to return an array containing of all the elements in the list in the current order. For example, if you have all the elements in the list, then it will return all the elements in the list in the correct order. Next, remove method. This method removes the first occurrence of a specified element from the list if it is present. For example, if you want to remove n from the added list, then it removes the first occurrence of n. If there is one more occurrence of n here, it won't remove that. Next, int size. This returns the number of elements in the list that is the size of the list. Suppose say we have added four elements, then it returns the size of the array list as four. Now let's demonstrate all the methods and see how it works and how it is used. I'll create one more class called ArrayList. Now in this example, we'll see how to add the elements. We'll create an array list of type AL, that is a reference. And we'll go on adding the elements into this. Now we have added three elements. 
Now let's try to print the size of the array and the contents present in the array. Let's execute and see what will be the output. So the size of the array list is three and the contents of array is a Dureka, Java and arrays. Now I want to remove Java from the list. So what will I do here is I will use a remove method to remove the element from the list. Now again, let's print the size of the array list after deletions. So when you remove Java from the list, it retrieved only edureka and arrays and the size will be decreased to two. So this is how we can remove the element. We can add the elements and we can retrieve the size of the array list. Now let's see how to clone the array list. First we'll make clone list as an object and then call the method. Now let's execute and see how the clone list appears. So as we have already removed the elements from the list, so it returns only the elements after deletion in the clone list. So if I make whole remove part as comment and execute, then it will retrieve the entire elements present in the array list. See that is elements in the clone list are edureka java and arrays. Now let's see how object to array method works. On executing this, this is how the output looks. Now let's use clear method and clear the array list. It's very simple al.clear and print the elements. After applying clear method, nothing will be present in the array. That is, the entire list will be cleared. Now let's see how to create a custom array list and add the elements, remove the elements, and retrieve the size of that. I'll create a class called custom array. Say I want to create a class of student data wherein I will be initializing role number, name, marks and phone number. So let's see how to do that. I'll create a class called student data and initialize the variables. Now I'll create a constructor and add the reference to these variables. Now let's begin with the main method. Now let's create a custom array list and reference the variables. Using add values method, I'm adding the values. Now I will invoke this function and define it. Here I'm invoking list.add method to add the elements in the list. Now, in order to print the values present in the list, I'm invoking a function called print values of list, and here I will give the definition for that. And now let's print the values present in the list. Now let's execute and see what will be the output. That is, it displays all the elements present in the array list. That is the roll number, name, marks, and mobile number. Now, if you want to remove one of the rows from the array list, let's see how to do it using remove method. Here I will give list.remove.
Now, if you want to remove the row of elements from the array list, then you can remove the elements from the list and then print the rest of the elements. So let's see what will be the output. So output is like this. First, it has printed all the elements present in the list. Then it printed the size of the list and it removed the first occurrence. When you use remove method, it removes the first occurrence present in the list. That is, it removes the first value. So it has removed the first row that is Chris and it retrieved the rest of the elements. So that's how you can create a custom array list and add the elements accordingly. Now let's jump into the last topic of today's discussion. That is advantages of array list over array. First, array list is variable length. Arrays are of fixed length. You cannot change the size of the array once they are created. But array list is variable length. That is, it can grow and shrink dynamically. Next, size of the array can be modified dynamically. When you add the elements into an array, the size will be increased. And if you remove the elements, the size will be automatically decreased. Next, you can add any type of the data, maybe list, union, structure, etc. Not only that, it also allows you to add the duplicate elements in the list. Next, you can traverse an array list in both the directions, that is, forward and backward directions using list iterator. And it also allows you to insert and remove the elements at a particular position. So I hope you understood the concept of array list and the difference between array and array list. That's all for the session. Thank you and have a nice day.